The following is a Candlepin Stars and Strikes rebroadcast featuring some of our most memorable programs. WNDS Sports and Tri-State Megabucks present Candlepin Stars and Strikes. Oh, look at this. Look at this! He's got it! Ready for a spare! Candlepin Stars and Strikes is sponsored in part by Washington Toyota Dodge Nissan. Looks good. Looks good. That's good to go. It's a move. Candlepin Stars and Strikes is produced in conjunction with the New Hampshire Candlepin Bowling Association. And now your hosts, Doug Brown and Dan Murphy. Hi, everybody, and welcome once again to semifinal week here on Candlepin Stars and Strikes. Uh, Stars and Strikes double semifinals yesterday. Now we move to singles. Doug Brown along with Dan Murphy and... Uh, we're left with three bowlers here in our singles competition. Chuck Langlois back looking for his second win in a row. Two veterans and uh, one rookie. We're going to see the rookie today, <laughs> and certainly not a, uh, with a rookie name. It's synonymous with Canopin Bowling Sergeant, so uh, it should be an interesting matchup. All right, let's meet our two bowlers. First of all, our number three seed from Concord, New Hampshire, meet Chuck Langlois. And Chuck had a great week last week at 424. He carries an average of 125. His roll-off score was 676. And last week with that win, he beat Gary Carrington with a 424. Gary Carrington with a 372. Chuck Langlois had the strike ball working, though. He had 16 marks, and seven of them were strikes. That makes it uh, for an easy day when you throw that many strikes. And not only you don't get tired, but the scores mount up pretty fast. He also had a double strike in there. That's right. In fact, that came early and helped him big up, uh, pick up an early lead. All right, Chuck will be going for his second win in a row. He'll face our number two seed from Haverhill, Mass., Chris Sargent. Okay, and Chris comes in averaging uh, 125, just like Chuck, has a high single of 199, and his roll-off score uh, two pins better than Chuck at 678. Yeah, some of the roll-off scores very, very close in this four-week series, and of course the winner of this match will move on to next week's championship to try and uh, take on our number one seed, Joe Ashline, but lots to happen between now and then. Of course, the uh, runner-up today will take home a check for $250. We've got a bonus ball contest coming up at the end of the show. Lots to do. Stick around. The next hour will be fun. Chuck? And Chris will start off our bowling right in a second. Don't go away. Well, those are the five bowlers that started this series on Candlepin Stars and Strikes. If you missed any of the action the last two weeks, Week one, Gary Carrington with the win over Mark Gallant. And then last week, as we already told you, the big 424 by Chuck Langlois to knock off Gary Carrington. So Chuck now tries to make it two wins in a row. Chris Sargent, the number two seed, is opponent. The winner of this match, as you saw, will be back next week to face our number one seed, Joe Ashline. Chuck Langlois starting this match with a half Worcester right. Last week in 30 boxes, Chuck had 16 marks, nine spares, seven strikes. As Dan mentioned, he threw a double strike very early in the match, got off to a quick lead. Never really looked back. <laughs> no. Almost strike number one there, leaving the nine pin. And right there for the spare. It's dead on the nine pin. No doubt about that one as soon as you let the ball go. And that's always a confidence builder. And here's our very first look at Chris Sargent. Chris, the son of Mike Sargent, of course, who's been He's been on a few TV shows, hasn't he? <laughs> yeah, I'll say. <laughs> yes, sir. Won a few tournaments. Mm -hmm. Yes, Chris Sargent with the spare in his first box. Converting the 7-10 with Wood. Well, that's a nice way to get things started. <laughs> Absolutely. Chris clearing out a piece of dead wood on lane 31. 
talking to his father, Mike, who's in the audience. And he says, give me any advice? He says, yeah, just take one check at a time, one box at a time, and don't look at the scoreboard. <laughs> Half Worcester on the fill. You'll be the first to admit he was, uh, Chris, uh, that he was quite nervous at the start of this match. <laughs> I told him, hey, throw a few balls and that'll ease up a little bit, but I guess you can't really describe what it's like until you get there. <laughs> uh, disappointing four. So it's just 16 after two. Chuck Langlois leading by one plus the fill in the spare. Wow, that was right in there, and oh, look, he walked that five pin. Seven fill on the spare. That's the good news. The bad news is he's le looking at the five, the seven, and the ten. Piece of wood next to the five. Now the wood's gone. <laughs> <laughs> and it's an eight, Chuck. Good effort there. Difficult spare leave for Chuck. By the way, before I forget, let's take a moment here, Dan, to wish everyone a very safe and happy Thanksgiving weekend upcoming. Right, it's on us before we know it here. And nice time of year, though. Started your Christmas shopping yet? Just yours. I got you the same thing I got you <laughs> last year. You didn't say anything about it, so I guess you probably enjoyed it. So. That was fair for Chris. We talk about that every year, and it's, yeah. I like the pressure of, you know, the 20, 21st, 22nd of December. Oh, I do some of my best shopping uh, the last couple yeah. of days. Light hit this time, but that's the forte here is get the pins mixing on that light hit. You can see nine pin drop. And he still has six of the 10 pins remaining in the playing surface, only one standing, that being a 10. Chance for two in a row. Oh. Thought the ball might just drive right through that wood, but apparently not. But Chris Sargent, with the help of that spare and the 10 box, will have the lead after four boxes by three. Let's take a look at that spare try. Again, the deflection. Lots of wood in front of the 10 pin. Chuck Langlois on lane 32, missing the head pin this time. Kind of an unusual leaf. And the one, three, four, seven, eight, nine. Now, see, if somebody walked up to you and told you, okay, Dan, go ahead and knock out the two, the five, the six, and the ten, <laughs> you could shoot that a thousand times and never do it. Oh, that's oh, a great, great out. out. Nice nine box for Chuck. Absolutely. Some help coming off the wall gets rid of the, I believe it was the nine pin, leaves himself the four horsemen, but more importantly, there's a pin in between the two and the four, which will help. Well, he was a little too full in the head pin. And the help I was talking about didn't help a, th <laughs> a thing. <laughs> nine box. Both bowlers. They're feeling the way out here early in the match. No one really taking charge. Right. 
Right him down, Ann. Right him down. Chris working on the 3 6 10. With Wood and the spare. Spares every time on lane 32 for Chris Sargent. That's three in a row. Now he'll try and solve lane 31. Right in the pocket that time. Nine drop. Just the seven pin. Right after it. Yes, sir. Right on it. Two marks in a row for Chris Sargent. Now the four, eight, and ten. Piece of wood next to the eight pin, which I think would be Heavy on the four pin, just catches a little of the, the eight. That wood may carry the ten. And the eight pin is off the spot a little bit, which might help as well. And he's got the other option of playing the one out front. But Oh, no, we're just right. missed it. He didn't catch the object pin, which was the four. A nine box. Stands right next to the bar return, and then when he takes his approach, he actually fades a little bit to the left. He ends up pretty close to the center of the lane when he delivers the ball. Interesting style. The 3 4 6 oh. Oh. almost on the cut shot. And the 10. 79 through 7. Slow start this week for Chuck Langlois. Chris Sargent leading by 14, plus the fill and the spare. And it'll be an 8 fill, and the wood will turn, and we'll see on the 5 and the 7. Not too bad, Chris. Not too bad. Should be red line. Should carry him the ball right off. All he has to worry about is the ball taking off too quickly and going over the 7 pin. Oh, Nicely played. Played it even higher than that and used the wood to carry the 7. Cap. Caps that wood. That's Chris, three in a row. Chris Sargent from Haverhill, Mass. He and his wife, Jean, have a one-and-a-half-year-old son, Patrick. Chris works for the Haverhill School System. A six fill on this mark. The four horsemen right. Looking for his fourth mark in a row. A little too far to the outside. And the 10 box. Of course, we tape candle pin stars and strikes here at Park Place Lanes in Wyndham, New Hampshire. Very conveniently located near Route 93 on Route 28 in Wyndham, New Hampshire, off exit 3. And uh, when you come down here to either watch one of our tapings or do some bowling on your own, don't forget to stop in and visit our good friend Rodney Cronin and the staff at Willow Tree North. The restaurant. Excellent Local. food. One of two restaurants located right inside Park Place Lanes. Willow Tree North. The 10 for Chuck, but Chuck is in need of some marks here. That's seven boxes in a row now, in this dry spell. And he hasn't thrown a strike yet. Close that time. But unless that wood turns, it's going to be a difficult spare. It's got to come up high in that wood to carry the four. Yes. 99 plus a ball. Hey, 
Six Phil, a 105. Hi, Chris. Talking about next weekend and Thanksgiving weekend. It's also championship weekend here on the Winds. It's coming Saturday at 12 noon, our championship match in Stars and Strikes doubles. And next Sunday here at noon, it'll be our singles championship match. One of these two gentlemen will be in that match against Joe Ashline from Nashua, New Hampshire. Three, four, six for Chris. Not quite. Seen two attempts at that now in this first game. Both very nearly made the shot. That one just sliding by the three pin. Takes the nine. So the lead now 28 as you see, but Chuck Langlois is able to put the spare up in the 10th. That ball just slid away at the last moment, and how about that? That ball was kind of angling away from the head pin when it hit the pocket, but he got a nice kick off the wall for the strike. Two, four, seven left. Watch the wood come spinning across right there. Gets in between the two and the four, and also takes the seven for the strike. Oh, yes, sir. Someone called it. Double strike in the 10th. One ball to come. There it is, just tripping the four pin. Yeah, this, the first strike was a little slow. That one wasn't. <laughs> Looking for 30 in the 10th. Well, that one skipped away a little bit. Well, let's see. <laughs> it won't be a strike, but it will be a slow seven. And that will be a 144. First game with us here on Stars and Strikes. Chris Sargent throws a fine game, and he has the early lead. We'll be back with game two in a minute. Well, pretty good, uh, pretty good beginning for Chris Sargent. Yeah, he's got to be really pleased with himself. First game in front of the light since a 144. Oh! <laughs> and you might have just created a monster. <laughs> <laughs> just brimming with confidence right now. On the single pin for the spare in the corner. That's mark number eight already for Chris. Six spares and, of course, that double strike in the 10th of the first game a moment ago. Oh, and almost another one there. It's all over the head pin now. One three pocket, one two pocket. Just was able to nail the 10 pin for a spare. This six pin. Two in a row. He's not looking back. Chuck Langlois trying to bounce back from a slow first game. He only had two marks. And he punches out the one, eight, and nine. An eight box. One of our participating sponsors this series here on Candlepin Stars and Strikes, Emmett Horgan and our friends at Rockingham Toyota Dodge Nissan. Come to Salem and save. Rockingham Toyota Dodge Nissan. We're gonna have to have Cindy Sissom go down and check that piece of wood. It's right in front of the two pin, which in this case is the object pin, the two, the five, and the eight. Rockingham Toyota Dodge Nissan on Main Street, Route 97, Salem, New Hampshire. Go in and say hello to Emmett. Tell him you heard us talking about him here on Stars and Strikes. That wood was in the way on the Deadwood line, but Chuck can't convert. The sleeper in the back, that eight pin, always will give you trouble. 
Might have been better off with the wood there. Uh, maybe, maybe. It could come off the wall. A lot of things could happen when you could play a piece of wood. Hi, Chris. Keep going. Back of the pocket again. This time the three and the six. Looking for his third straight spare to start game two. And that's on the tail of a double strike finishing the first game. Oh yeah. Did his dad teach him how to bowl, you suppose? No. I, no. <laughs> Eight drop again. And a chance at another one. This time the 3 5. Sure, Dad worked with him a little bit. Oh, yes. Four spares in a row to start game two. And in 14 boxes, Chris Sargent now has 11 marks. Ho oh, hum. All of a sudden you're a veteran after 14 boxes. <laughs> <laughs> well, Chuck Langlois could use something to happen, oh. and no luck at all. A five pin stays up. Kind of the reverse of what Chuck was able to do against Gary Carrington last week. He's having it done to him this week. Mm. Trailing by 67 now. Trying to get something happening. Wants the 10 pin to go and it moved the 10 pin, didn't fall down. It's gonna have to snap the wood. Actually go right at the four pin. That's what he's trying to do. Oh nice yes! Shot. Nice shot. I have a feeling we'll get another look at that one as we head out to the break. We'll be back. Chuck Langlois and Chris Sargent each with a spare up in the fourth. We're coming back, don't go away. Well, Chris Sargent has the big lead, and he's working on his fourth consecutive spare here in the second game. A lot of determination in that face. So that young fellow right there. Oh, back on the head pin. This time a little full, though. Spread eagle. But still a 69 through the first four boxes. Don't bet against him with that wood there. Oh, almost. Nice, Chris. Nice, Chris. Almost. I'll bet what cost him that shot, if that wood had been frozen against the two-pin, he probably would have had it. I think you're right. Instead, it's a nine and a 78 half. Let's take a look and see if that wood is, yep, it's turned away from the two-pin right there. Mm -hmm. If that wood is turned a little bit toward the two-pin, he probably has it for a spare. Almost another spread eagle, but it's oh. dead. <laughs> Got a big, you heard somebody in the back say thank you. Because for a minute it looked like the spread eagle, and then it looked like maybe the two, four, seven with maybe the three or the six, and then. Yeah, could have had a real mess. Sure. And all of a sudden he's looking at just the four and the seven. Yes, sir. Chuck Langlois is working on a spare also. And Chuck really pushed that ball at the point of release instead of having it flow freely out of his hands. Timing uh, not quite the same as it was last week. Big lead for Chris Sargent at the halfway point. Chuck back on the head pin and look at that for a leave. He deserved better. Five, seven, nine. Sounds ugly, and it is. 
Ooh. Almost. Oh, great effort. <laughs> And the 10. Certainly hope you'll be able to take a little time out from your Thanksgiving weekend next week to join us for our championship matches here on the Winds. Saturday at noon, our doubles championship. And then here Sunday at noon for our singles championship. The winner of this match against Joe Ashline. Five, eight, nine, ten. Right, dude, right, get a couple, get a couple. We would consider ourselves a nice break from football on Thanksgiving weekend. Absolutely. And how much football can you watch? That's anyway. right. And they can watch us and still get their fill of football. That's right. You won't miss any football. <laughs> That's right. One oh two now for Chris Sargent through seven boxes, second game, opening game one forty four in case you just joined us. And it's because of balls just like that. Right on the one two pocket, leaves himself the three six, another spare leave. Already has five spares in this game alone. Not best time. And a nine. It's only the second time in the whole match that Chris has gone back-to-back -back boxes without a mark. You do that, chances are you'll be in the lead, and he yeah. is. <laughs> Absolutely right. One, three, and ten for Chuck. Needs to get something going. No. Missing the head pin altogether. Chuck just sliding by the head pin. Narrowly missed it. How about this? The one, two, four, nine, and ten. With some wood, let's see. Oh, Chuck uh, let up a little bit on the delivery on that one. He wanted to keep the ball on the plate a little bit longer, perhaps, and it almost worked. Get that wood flying around. But he'll take a 10 box, unable to capitalize on the two opens left by Chris Sargent. There's the damage so far by Chris. Well, <laughs> this time just the three pin. Hello. <laughs> well, will he try the head pin or just try to grab either the 6, 10, or the 4, 7? No. Nope. Oh. Right <laughs> that was great effort there. That might have been a function of the fact that he's got the big lead, so. Yeah, and he's got a lot of confidence right now, and he's just, no, I can go for the head pin and hopefully I'll get three or four and that's exactly what he did. 120 now through nine. Cruising right now. Oh, big strike ball in the tenth again. All of his strikes have been in the tenth box. He had a double strike in the first game in the tenth. How about again? Another one. He's done it again. That looked exactly the same as the first strike. Just kicking the six pin out. Watch. Right there. Carbon copy. Same ball in the one two pocket. And both times the six pin was the last one to go down. Think of what his score would be if either of these double strikes <laughs> had been in the middle of the game. I know. Doesn't get the full effect in the last box. Already at 140. <laughs> and just like last time, the. Uh, third ball not what he wanted he'll take a three for a 143 14 marks in two games not too shabby 287 through two meanwhile Chuck Langlois just has not been able to get 
even a single break to this point. Takes the 4-7 out for the spare. Well, we talked about Chuck and the strike ball. Of course, last week he had seven strikes, uh, six strikes rather. No, I was right the first time, he had seven. The time before that when he was here, he competed in doubles and had seven strikes. And that was in only 16 boxes. He's yet to get a strike here today though and struggling after that spare with just the three fill and now the six for a 106. A two game total, 2-11, the big lead for Chris Sargent, one game to go. The winner to go to the championship next week and we'll be back with more on Stars and Strikes in a minute. Chuck Langlois to start game three, and he could use some strikes. A whole bunch, really. But he'll take a spare. His sixth mark of the match so far. Uh, and again, right flush on the head pin, this time just four pins. Boy, that's the kind of a day it's been for Chuck Langlois. Everything that went right last week has gone wrong this week. <laughs> Meanwhile, Chris Sargent is just rolling along. I'll bet he's completely forgotten about that two fill in the four box in the first game. What do you think? I would say he has. <laughs> Doesn't seem to have bothered him much. But knowing his father, his father's going to remind him of those two. <laughs> <laughs> you bowled all right, son, but I wouldn't have thrown a four fill and a, a three fill or two fill and a four box. Oh, but there's a big spare. <laughs> that comes with experience. I can hear him now. <laughs> Everything collapses here with the help of the wood. Absolutely. Another nice mark by Chris. Five is the lazy, fill. Get lazy, buddy. Cut. Oh, he's a great bowler. He's becoming a great bowler. He's a great kid, too. He's bowled next to him at a couple oh. roll-offs. Oh, what a spare. <laughs> and he's just a uh, credit to his mom and dad because he's a nice kid. Two marks in a row now for Chris. Chuck Langlois. I think, you, think you'll mind you calling him a kid? Well, he's got to be a kid. Well, compared to you, I suppose. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, I know, I know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Spare for Chuck Lagois in the third. I have to call him a kid because I bowl against his father, and it just <laughs> doesn't seem possible. But <laughs> Young man. Well, correct that. I, like <laughs> I guess I'm not going to bail out of this one, am I? 4 7 10. Oh, in wow. front of the 10 pin. Oof. <laughs> I don't know if we get a replay in that, but he threw the 4 pin in front of the 10 pin. Incredible. Nine box. And we will yeah. look at it. Oh, yeah. What a what a crew. Look at that. Oof. Twice. <laughs> Chris Sargent comes up working on a spare. What else is new? Light hit that time, he's going to get seven anyways, maybe eight. No. And it'll be a nine for Chris. Runner-up today takes third place prize money, $250.
The winner, of course, moves into the finals next week against Joe Ashline for a chance at $1,000 and also the automatic qualifier into the Tri-State Megabucks Tournament of Champions. Mark Gregory was our first qualifier of the year. Everything but the 10 pin. Nine bucks, 50 through four. Chris Sargent maintaining the big lead and we'll be back on Stars and Strikes in just a minute. Chuck Langlois. Love to catch fire here in the final few boxes. Be tough with splits like these though. Three, six, four, seven, no wood. Desperate need of some spares and strikes. And a tough defense. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Through the center this time. <laughs> Almost. Chris Sargent would seem just about a lock for a 400 triple at this point. He had 287 after two. He already has 16 marks in this match. And he's done a lot of damage on lane 32. You see him doing the damage on the four horsemen. Usually a 400 triple number of marks. It's got to be around 14, 15 and up. To, unless you throw some double strikes in there. Like oh, yeah. One. That assures him the 400 and then some. He's thrown five strikes in the match, all of them on lane 31. And over on lane 32, in 13 tries, he has eight spares. <laughs> So he spread it around. Spare for Chuck Langlois. It's not very often that we uh, have someone get 20 marks in a single show, but Chris has a shot at it. He needs just two more, and he's got four boxes left. And again, on lane 31, Chuck flush on the head pin. <laughs> on a rail one this time, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> Tough crowd. It really is. Spare leave, one, three, six. Remember, this is on a strike. No. That's the ball he wanted. He's at 384 right now with three boxes to go. He's already locked Chuck out mathematically with the big lead. And the nine drop kicking back on the head pin. Right the face, right the face. 
Oh yes, single pin spare. We come down to the final two boxes. Chris Sargent with a great triple working and Chris is going to be back next week in our championship match against Joe Ashline. We could see some big numbers in that one. What is the uh, record for the number of marks in there? I'm uh, glad you asked. Just pipe it right up on the computer there, can't you? Yeah, as soon as I take this piece of paper out. <laughs> <laughs> 101 through 9. Chuck just wants this over. The record is 23. And that goes back to... That's going to go now. This match is over. <laughs> well, it usually falls over. The first few weeks we were on the air back in June of 84 when uh, Rick Farwell... Oh, yes. Rick, where are you now? That's right. Rick threw a 481, which for a long time, uh, or actually about a year or so, was the high triple here on the show. Now it's second. That's going to be a nine box for Chuck as he let that one go into the channel. So he'll finish at a 110 and a 321. Rick Farwell's uh, 481 is now the second high triple all time. Peter Flynn in June of 85 threw a 482. But in Rick Farwell's uh, triple, he had 23 marks. And that is the record. Not many people have had 20, maybe five or six total. But uh, Chris Sargent has a shot at it. He needs one more mark for his 20th. Will this be it? No. Well, they have one more box to try to do it. I'm sure he has no idea that he has that many <laughs> marks. <laughs> Just have you people at home something to cheer about, that's all. He's already at 408. Sit on the edge of your seats and hope he gets another mark for well, the 20th. This is, this is his big box, though. He's got two double strikes <laughs> in the 10th. Put it down. <laughs> Let's see. <laughs> well, he's got a shot. The two and the five. Put it down. Oh, oh no. Chopped it right off. Too bad. So it'll be 19 marks for Chris. The 10 box, a 131, and an outstanding 418 for Chris Sargent. The big win over Chuck Langlois. It'll be Chris against Joe Ashline next week. We'll talk more about that match and talk to the bowlers and check out our bonus ball contest when we come back. All right, welcome back here to Candlepin Stars and Strikes here on the Winds. Doug Brown along with Dan Murphy. And, uh, well, we talked a lot about you know, making first appearance on television, first appearance on the show and whatever. And, and it is a completely different atmosphere. For, for those of you who compete uh, in tournaments and so forth, uh, it, it's just a completely different atmosphere. There, there are cameras, there are lights. You have to wait around for things you don't have to wait around for when you're bowling in competition. Uh, it's a completely different atmosphere, and it can be a little unnerving uh, first time. And obviously it was terribly so for Chris Sargent today. Yeah, your saliva <laughs> glands shut off, or your mouth gets dry, your tongue gets big, you know, you can't swallow, you think you're going to die, really, until you throw that first couple of boxes but boy right out of the shoot he made a spare and uh, just relaxed and uh, has something to tell his children when they're <laughs> right. up here I and mean, I won't see them but <laughs> oh, you'll still be here Dan come on <laughs> let's meet our two bowlers uh, introduce them once again to you first of all let's bring up Chuck Langlois Chuck come on up we have a, uh, a check here for you for two hundred and fifty dollars uh, this is uh, I guess turnabout is fair play uh, you did it to Gary last week and uh, and this week Chris does it to you just the difference of uh, of a little bit each way on the first ball, especially, and it just wasn't happening today. Well, I, I think it's that uh, two cheeseburgers I had. A little <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, I know how it feels to get the uh, marks thrown at you now, that's for sure. And uh, he's bowling well. He's bowling well. I lost it. I don't know where I lost it. But, you know. <laughs> well, you were right about Chris. It comes and goes. You know. <laughs> well, you were right about Chris. He threw a fantastic score at you. Absolutely. I'd rather be beat like that than uh, beat by a couple of pins. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, you got your wish then. <laughs> Congratulations, Thank Chuck. You, Thanks very much. And now we'll have Chris come up and throw one more ball for us on uh, lane 31 to try and uh, win someone. $40 in cash and uh, Chris himself can win a brand new set of bowling balls from Paramount Industries, as can the uh, person on our postcard. If we get a match. 
It'll be a six. Dan Murphy will reach into the TV and draw out a postcard. And it is not a match for Doris Ferrante of Stoneham, Mass. Doris, thanks very much for mailing in the card. Your guess was seven. You'll be receiving a consolation gift uh, courtesy of TV50 and the NHCBA. Slide right in here, Chris, so that we can get you on camera. Congratulations. Uh, well, I know you're, you're probably happy the first one's out of the way, but uh, it seemed like, boy, I mean, you were talking about being nervous beforehand, but after you get started, it just seemed to come real quick for you. Yeah, very nervous. <laughs> a little bit, so... But boy, the, uh, you seemed like you were throwing very nice and loose, and uh, did you notice anything different while you were up there? It seemed like you were just in a groove after you got it started. Yeah, I, the cameras and lights at first were really, you know, there. And then after I got going, it just didn't bother me anymore, so. After you, after you get used to it, you just kind of forget all about that stuff, right? Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> you got to. <laughs> well, next week, uh, we got a guy, perhaps uh, perhaps you've heard of him, Joe Ashline coming in to bowl against you? Yes, I have. <laughs> <laughs> yep. You made another uh, big score for that one. Oh, yes, definitely. Congratulations, Chris. Cur terrific job. First performance uh, on Stars and Strikes. Congratulations. We'll see you next week. And uh, let's show you one more time a look at the ladder. We're down to our top two. This is one of those series, Dan, where it's been impossible for anybody to win two in a row. We've had three different winners in our first three matches, and uh, Joe Ashline comes in in that number one spot next week. A uh, tough competitor, and you got a rookie that uh, wins his first time, and now next week he bowls for the championship. Possible tournament of champion qualification. There's a lot riding on it. Well, again, uh, we hope that all of you have a very safe and happy Thanksgiving weekend upcoming, and we hope you have a chance to spend a part of it with us as it'll be championship weekend here on The Winds, Saturday at noon on Stars and Strikes Doubles, next Sunday at noon right back here on Stars and Strikes. Until then, for Dan Murphy and the whole Winds crew, I'm Doug Brown. Have a happy Thanksgiving, everybody.